Okay, let's continue. Uh, so we have the neutral axis, and that's uh, at 294.2 millimeters above the uh, the base of the section. So let's go on and uh, calculate the uh, gross moment of inertia. I g I sub g is equal to the moment of inertia above the neutral axis, which is this concrete rectangular portion. It's uh, 300 wide and it's 305.8 uh, in height cubed divided by 12 plus its AD squared component. That's going to be 300 wide times 305.8 times the d d squared, which is 305.8 over 2 squared. It's the distance from this centroid to the centroid of the neutral axis. Then uh, we calculate inertias below the neutral axis, so we have the the concrete uh, section tension is fully effective because it hasn't cracked yet. So we can take 300 wide times 294.2 cubed over 12 plus its corresponding uh, AD squared component. That would be 300 times 294.2 times 294.2 over 2 squared plus the AD squared component of the now transform the uh, area of steel. So the area of the steel is 4266 millimeters squared times its distance uh, from the neutral axis to its centroid, which is uh, 550. minus the 305.8 squared. Okay, so let's uh, calculate it out. It's 300 <coughs> times 305.8 cubed divided by 12 plus 300 times 305.8 times 305.8 over 2 squared plus 300 times 294.2 cubed divided by 12 plus 300 times 294.2 times 294.2 times a half <laughs> squared <coughs> plus uh, the area of the uh, of the of the rebar transform 4266 times uh, 550 minus 305.8 squared, <coughs> and that comes out to be uh, 5,660 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. <coughs> so now that we have the gross inertia of this whole section, we can calculate the uh, cracking moment. So we use my over i, moment cracking, times uh, y over the gross moment of inertia. And that equals the uh, stress cracking, which is right here. So we can uh, rearrange and uh, get the cracking moment. Moment cracking 
equals the cracking stress times the gross inertia divided by y. So stress cracking, 3.29 MPa here. The gross inertia, 5,660 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th over uh, y. And y would be the distance to from the neutral axis to where the, uh, the stress is. So we're taking stresses at this point at the 3.28 MPa, 3.29 MPa uh, location. So that's going to be this distance here, <coughs> which is this 294.2 millimeters. Cracking moment would be. 3.29 MPa times 5,660 e to the 6 divided by 294.2. So that's going to be in Newton millimeters. MPa is Newtons per millimeter squared. Millimeters to the fourth. <coughs> that's Newton millimeters squared divided by millimeters. That's Newton millimeters. So let's uh, put into kilonewton meters divided by a thousand squared. <coughs> so the cracking moment is uh, 63.29 kilonewton meters. So, the, so what this means, what the, all this here means, is that if we apply a pure moment of 63.29 kilonewton meters on this section here we will have a stress in the bottom fibers equal to 3.29 MPa and that 3.29 MPa is the maximum tensile capacity of concrete and once we go just a minute bit over this we'll have cracked the section. Now in the next lecture I'll continue this point and what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it a different way using the, the force approach I'll, I'll take the um, the neutral axis we've already calculated, but I want to calculate now the, the stresses in, in the top fibers in the uh, steel and then see what the forces are. Forces are above the axis, forces are below the axis, and see if they all balance. They should balance. So th this is the uh, MY over I approach to solving for the cracking moment, but we could also use a force approach. Uh, this approach is easier to use, but the uh, force approach is a more logical and in intuitive. B both uh, methods uh, give the exact same result, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, finish off that point, the force approach, uh, in the next tutorial, uh, tutorial 1.3. Okay, thanks.